Hey, what's up guys? Radku here, back with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. And today is going to be Counter Fairies. Now, I've been trying to make this deck for a few days now. I was gonna do this on Friday, but then something came up, so I didn't have a chance to. So, I'm going to do this today. So, yeah. Counter Fairies is a really cool deck. So, um, it's not very competitive, but it's still really good. So, basically, this was the original archetype that, um, used, uh, the Solemn Brigade. And basically, the whole point of it is when a, a counter trap activates, it gains certain effects. Really, you only have two cards that actually gain effects from it. But, um, it's also based around this card known as Sanctuary in the Sky, but you do have other replacement cards, that's why I only played at one copy, but we'll get into that in a second. So without further ado, let's jump right into the deck profile. Starting things off, I play one copy of Sacred Arc Air Knight Parshath. So, um, the original Air Knight Parshath was really, really bad. Um, so this, um, retrain actually really helps, uh, the deck out a lot. So, let me read its huge effect. Uh, if you activate a counter trap or if you negate the activation of a spell trap or a monster effect, Except during the damage step, you can banish two other fairies from your hand, field, or graveyard. Special summon this card from your graveyard. Uh, if it was there when the activated slash negated effect or hand, even if it wasn't. So basically, it's special summon from anywhere except for the deck if uh, you activate a counter trap. Which is actually pretty good, um, considering that you have so many counter traps. Then, if this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage. Then, when this card inflicts damage to your opponent, uh, add one Parshath card or one counter trap from your deck to your hand. Now, this effect is really, really, really good. So, the thing is that you have a ton of counter traps through the Solemn Brigade, which I decided to max out on. So, that means that you can um, easily search your Solemn Strike or even a Judgment, and then you have ways of getting around their costs. So, basically, you just gain a free plus one just by negating something which is really really powerful now I play one copy of Archlord Christia now the thing is that I decided to play this at one copy but you could play this at two copies I kind of liked Christia at one um because even if you don't draw into it, you're not going to lose a ton in the deck. You don't have a ton of ways of searching your fairy monsters, but you do have um, uh, your really good boss monsters. Arch Archlord Christia is one of the best boss monsters ever. So, but um, its effect is if you control four or more fairy monsters in your... Or if you have four or more fairy monsters in your graveyard, you can special summon it from your hand. Then if... If special summon this way, you can target one fairy monster in the graveyard, add it to your hand. Neither can special neither player can special summon monsters. This deck is very normal summon based, but that floodgate effect is the best effect. Uh if this face up card would be sent to the graveyard, place it on the top of the deck instead. So some recurrence, an easy summoning condition, and frankly one of the best effects in the game. So Really, you need almost all your fairy monsters at least uh, in the graveyard once, and even then, um, it's not highly likely. Um, so, but since it says four with different names, um, you have your ca card called Herald of Heaven, which you can discard it to add a sanctuary in the sky. So if you can manage to fuel that, you can pretty easily um, trigger off this card's effect. But... Um, Frankly, it's it's a really good card, but not exactly in the best deck. So if you want to play more than one copy of uh, Arc Knight, Arc Air Knight Parshath, um, you can. Then I play two copies of Bountiful Artemis. Uh, each time you activate a uh, a counter trap, draw one card. So basically, just a free draw one every time you negate your opponent's stuff because this deck doesn't really negate any other way other than Cough Cough Mine. 
Um, so this card's your main card. Um, it really helps you pick through your deck and helps you get to your um, more powerful monsters. Because this deck really doesn't have an objective until you get to your uh, Sacred Arc Knight Parshath. Or it's a lockout deck or it's... Um, it's a mill deck because you're just waiting for your opponent to run out of cards. So, you know. Then I play three copies of Minerva Scholar of the Sky. So each time a counter trap is activated, this card gains 500 attack. Um, and this, uh, if you have Sanctuary in the Sky on the field, add one counter trap with a different name from your deck to your hand. So, ignoring its gain 500 attack effect, which actually isn't bad because it's a permanent attack gain, um, it helps search your, um, your, uh, spell, or your trap cards, which is actually really, really good in this deck because that means you have two ways of searching your, um, traps, as well as the fact that you have extra deck ways of searching it, which means that you basically will almost always get one of your traps, which really ups the consistency of the deck. Then I play three copies of, uh, Guiding Array, Array, didn't, you know what I mean. So basically, this card has a mm, fairly bad normal effect. Um, then, um, so, it actually has a pretty good both effects. Um, so, it's pendulum effect, which is mainly the ones that I used in playtesting. Uh, you don't pay the activation costs of counter traps, which is really, really powerful. Meaning that you can activate a solemn judgment without having to pay any life points. Or, um, uh, it's normal effect. Uh, you... Uh, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can reveal three counter traps from your deck, add one to your hand, and then shuffle the other ones back into the deck. So really no cost other than the fact that it needs to be destroyed. Um, but really this deck doesn't destroy itself a lot, so I don't know if that's really the best effect considering how OTK heavy the game is at this point. But, you know, it, it's fine. Uh, really only pay, play it for your pendulum effect. So, yeah. Now I play three copies of Herald of Heaven. I never, I'm never able to... Per, uh, Herodias. Um, you can discard it to add Sanctuary of the Sky. Pretty good um, since your Sanctuary of the Sky really isn't searchable other than with um, field searchers. So, yeah, generically good. Um... Plus, you want to get to that as quickly as possible so you can fuel Minerva's effect. So that way you can continually get um, that. I decided to play two copies of Violum Prism. So it's a Thunder type and not a Fairy type. But I really wanted a way to get into my Avenge Knight Parshath. Because um, for literally no reason, I was trying to find a level 4 fairy tuner monster, but um, the thing is that the only deck that has a level 4 fairy tuner monster is um, Azir, and I hate Azir, so I decided to play this at two copies. Um, not searchable, not good. Uh, has a okay effect considering that you go into light synchro monsters, but frankly, you're never, like in an actual competitive deck, you're never going to play this card. <laughs> but I liked it as a t uh, two of. Then I play three copies of Pod of Extravagance. You don't really need the extra deck in this deck, so this is definitely your best draw spell. Uh, two copies of Pod of Duality. Basically, free draws since you don't special summon a ton in this deck, other than your boss monsters, including your Avenged Knight Parshath. Uh, then I play two copies of Dem Demise of the Land. Uh, this is really just to search Mystic Mine. Um, two copies of Mystic Mine because... It, it's Mystic Mine. This deck doesn't special summon at all. Um, plus, really, since it doesn't special summon, that means um, you don't have to worry about uh, continually activating effects. So you can lock out your opponent with your trap cards, and then um, your opponent really doesn't have a anything to do. So you could just sit on a Mystic Mine, or you can set up uh, um, like a Sacred... Ar uh, Arknight, er, 
Sacred Arc Air Knight Parshath and just uh, snipe at your opponent. <clears throat> then I play one copy of Sanctuary in the Sky. Um, basically, it just saves you from battle uh, damage. Uh, the monsters still get destroyed, but you're okay um, from any battle damage, which is a meh effect. Like, it's an okay effect. It's not good, but it's not bad either. Um, now I play two copies of Sanctum of Parshath. So this card is actually, uh, really good. It is the, um, alternative, uh, to, um, uh, ignore that. <clears throat> it's the alternative to, um, uh, sanctuary in the sky. So its effect is this card's name becomes sanctuary in the sky, meaning that you can fuel your monster effects. Then fairy monsters uh, gain 300 attacks. That spell and traps cannot be targeted by or destroyed by card effects. Then once per turn, you can target a total of three fairy or counter type trap or counter traps with different names in your graveyard. Place them on the top of your deck in any order. So, being able to reuse your trap cards is actually pretty good. Um, but mainly it's you, uh, it's good because that means your opponent can't really get rid of, um, uh, your spell and trap cards unless they have, like, Lightning Storm, which is actually a pretty heavily played card, but let's ignore that. Then I play one copy of Terraforming, search out your Mystic Mind and your Sanctuary in the Sky. One copy of Metaverse, really just to search your Mystic Mind, uh, Three copies of Judgment. So Judgment, it, you basically play the whole Solemn Brigade. I'm not going to go through all their effects. This card negates everything. This card negates special summons. This card negates uh, spells and traps, mostly. Uh, so then I play uh, two copies of Jar of Avarice. Most people sleep on this card. But since this is a Mystic Mind deck, um, you're going to be using a lot of spell cards. And being able to renew those spell cards is actually really important. Because um, if you renew like a destroyed Mystic Mind or even a Pot of Extravagance, that means you can fuel those effects and continue to draw cards. So this card's actually really good because... Um, it targets five cards and not monsters, which means that it's, like, seriously one of the best cards I've ever seen. It's too bad it's not a trap card, but that means that it's still really good. Um, so that's it for the main deck. Main deck is okay. Um, there are quite a few things I would change about this. I'd probably bump up Mystic Mind to three, but I just kind of like this as a casual build. Uh, I play one copy of Appaloosa for negation. You won't really summon a ton of your link monsters, considering that this is a normal summon deck. Um, but it's not bad. You go into it, like, once every million years. Uh, one copy of Boral Sword for OTKs. One copy of Mechanic Crusadia Avermax for, um, also OTK potential and a great boar, uh, beater on the field. Uh, three copies of, uh, Celestial, uh, Night Lord Parshath because this is the, um, uh, the, the spell, or the link monster for this deck. Uh, it can discard one card to add a fair, uh, Sanctuary in the Sky or a card that specifically lists it. So you can add a Minerva or even a, uh, Guiding, whatchamacallit. Um, and, um, um, or, uh, <laughs> If Sanctuary is on the field, out of Fairy instead. So, really, this can search most of your deck. Um, this is really important because you can actually search your um, Sacred uh, Air Knight Parashath uh, or even an Archlord Christia, which can really get, uh, get you started. Uh, then I play one copy of Cerberus, Phoenix, and Unicorn, just because they're great lockdown cards. Are, uh, they're great uh, disruption cards. Uh, one copy or two copies of Avenge Knight Parshath. So uh, pot of extravagance fodder, really important. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I decided to play. Uh, like I said, Prism because I wanted to go into this. It has a pretty mediocre effect, but I kind of just like the artwork of all the Knight Parshath cards. So I put this in here and put an ability to summon it out. Uh, for some generic Xyz monsters, one Cowboy, oh, one Emerald, um, one Dweller, and one Tornado. 
Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the deck. Um, please like, subscribe, share, comment, let me know what you thought, and let me know if there's anything you would change about this. Uh, would you up the amount of counter traps? Because this deck really is based around counter traps. Like, would you make it a non-Mystic Mind deck? Because the Mystic Mind holders take up, like, quite a few spots. So... Yeah, would you change that up? Uh, would you change up the number of cards? Is there an actual tuner that I can use that's a lot better? And yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'll see you in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Peace, guys.